find a way. Storm may rise and the winds may blow, but I feel like pressing my way. Do I have anyone in here today that feel like pressing your way? Pressing your way through the storm. Some pressing your way through the wind. No matter what comes your way, you feel like pressing your way. into this worship experience. Amen. Came in this morning with a press on their hearts and letting us know that no matter what come or go, they feel like pressing their way. They gave up their clothes of this world of, of, and put on that clothes of righteousness and now they're ready to press their way say good morning to each and every one of you on this day certainly this is a day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it I am once again Bishop John E. McDowell, Sr., pastor of Antioch and Mount Olive Rua Baptist Church, where Mother Patricia McDowell is the First Lady. Amen. Amen. We certainly thank God for all that He has done for us, to us, and in us. Allow me to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we, I stand before you on this day with thanksgiving in my heart. I stand before you with the confirmation to the lyrics that was just sung. I feel like pressing my way. Father, I know, Lord, that in this press, I can't do it without you. Now, Lord, I ask that you walk beside me. Be a light by passing a lamp to my feet. Be a compass unto the way that I must go. That I may follow you. Until the destiny that you have laid out for me. Now, Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus. Who humbly and died and early on a Sunday morning. Before the dew drops was consumed by the morning rays. Got up out of the tomb with all power in his hand. And because he got up, Lord, not only do I feel like pressing on but I can press on you. Now, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be accepted. I say, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen and hallelujah. Amen. This morning, my brothers and sisters, 
With the Lord's help, I want to speak to you from a New Testament reading coming from Mark. The first chapter, verses 35 through 38. And I will be reading this from the New Living Translation. Matthew, the Mark 1, 35 and 38, through 38. Once you arrive, there are these other words you will find. Before daybreak the next morning, Jesus got up and went out to an isolated place to pray. Later, Simon and the others went out to find him. And when they found him, they said, everyone is looking for you. But Jesus replied, we must go on to the other towns as well. And I will preach to them too. That is why I came. This morning, I would like to preach this message And use this topic as a spiritual guidance and this thought in mind. Being spiritually prepared for your next assignment. Being spiritually prepared for your next assignment. My brothers and sisters, we are a predestined people with a purpose of life. When we enter into this world, God, he created us that we may be used to carry out a mission. Everyone's mission is not the same. Everyone's assignment is not the same. But you have been given something to do. It is in the pursuit for the good of humanity and through the purposeful deed and endeavors that you own your power and soar to extraordinary levels of living. The greatest sorrow in human life is to die without doing what God wants you to do on this earth. Amen. Truth be told, God wants us to dominate the earth with his kingdom principles, shutting down the strategies of the adversary. A purposeful life is when you are operating in your calling while aligning your values, your passion, and the good things that make you feel happy with God. This is harder than it sounds. And the reason why is because finding your purpose in life is not always easy because the adversary came to kill, to steal, kill, and destroy. That's why Jesus spake a parable unto his disciples, telling them that man ought always pray and not sin. When James was saying, what James was saying in the, the fifth chapter and the sixteenth verse of his book. When saying, 
The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. He was saying that we must constantly pray, pray, and, and when we pray, we must be earnest in our prayer. Yes, yes. Because if we are earnest in our prayer, great prayer power produces wonderful results. Yes. Yes. When Jesus prayed, the heavens opened and the Holy Spirit descended down upon him. We find that the Spirit came upon the disciples as they gathered in the day of Pentecost because Acts 2 and 1 tells us when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. In verse 31 and chapter 4 picks it up and said, and when they prayed, the place was shaking where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God boldly. Now, my brothers and sisters, when two or three come together in prayer, I mean earnest prayer, not with the mind outside of the circle, but with the mind in one place, things happen. God goes on to let us know that when we do these things, Jesus is always in the midst. But there will come a time that part of your circle can only be the Father, the Son, Holy Ghost, and you. God does things in and through our lives by prayer that can and won't be done no other way. That's why he told his disciples on one occasion that some things come only by fasting and prayer. As we pray and as we focus our attention and it's turning toward God, we become more receptive to aligning our life up with God's will. This world is full of distractions. And they come by the way of things. They come by the way of people. They come by a way of spiritual stronghold that can impede on our minds and call us to go the opposite way than God wants us to do. It can cause us to walk away from our assignment. Jesus told Peter in the 31st verse of Luke chapter 22 that the devil had demanded to come and sift you like wheat. My brothers and sisters, the adversary wants to use things, people, and strongholds to sift you. The Spirit of the Lord will not empower us if we are oblivious to what he is saying. He requires our complete attention. He requires our attention before he will fill us with the power and the presence of his spirit. It's sad to say, but there are some Christians in a household of faith that do not know how to pray. They are like babies crying out. They don't know how to talk. Jesus himself did not receive what he asked for always, so why should we expect to receive what we want always? But his prayers were always heard 
And they were always answered. Mark 14 and 36 tells us, and he said, Abba Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thy will. If you do not sense the power of the Holy Spirit in your life, you may not be spending adequate time in prayer. Trust, truth be told, some of us, we do not pray as often as we ought to. And trust me when I say this, if you are willing to commit yourself to spend sustained time in prayer, asking God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven, he will do it. God wants you to be overcomer because his son Jesus was the overcomer. He wants you to overcome the world as if he, like he overcome the world. And when he say overcome the world, he means things that pertain to the world, things that's causing you to slow down, things that's causing you to, to give up, throw up your arms and walk away. My brothers and sisters, God will work in your life just as he did the life of Jesus, his son, and his disciples. Let me say it like this. It is better to have a heart without words when you pray than words without a heart. Because the function of prayer is not to influence God, but rather to change the nature of us when we pray. You cannot come to God in prayer as a human vessel, but you must come to him as an empty vessel that he may fill you and that he may speak to you and that he may share with you the things pertaining to the kingdom. Don't ever forget why you are doing what you are doing. I don't care what you, what ministry you are in, don't ever forget why you are doing what you are doing. Because what you are doing, it provides the fuel to keep you moving forward. If you forget what you're doing, you will never have the power to fuel the vigor to move forward. Well, as we focus our attention on this particular pericope, Mark was the first written book of the synoptic gospel. Come on in here. Amen. And was used as a source by the other gospel, two gospels, Matthew and Luke, as a central element in discussion on the synoptic problem. The gospel of Matthew, Mark, and Luke are referred as the synoptic gospels because they include many of the same story also in similarity and sequence to the others and sometimes in identical words. However, they stand in contrast with John's gospel. Those contents that are comprehensively and distinct. This is the beginning of the gospel. And 
the other will piggyback off this gospel. Except the gospel of John. As we look at our text today, Jesus needs to steal away and find some time to pray. If you think you are faced with a lot of pressures in this world, can you imagine the pressure that Jesus must have experienced? He was facing a mass group of people every day. People that had needs. People that was hurt. People that wanted something for nothing. As Jesus moved forward into his ministry, the pressures got even greater and the crowd got even bigger. So we find that now in his ministry, we find that he find himself wore out and tired, just like anybody else. We know that after Jesus first hit him, experience in the temple, his reputation preceded him all across the countryside. And it must have brought people from everywhere. And people would find that they were lepers, outcasts, lame, blamed, instigators, agitators, come from all directions. And because of his nature, has been 100% human and 100% divine. We find that the people are coming in on him were getting very stressful. It was overwhelming to him at times. And that flesh that had became that had became a part of his life when it was said in John 1 and 14 Word became flesh and lived among us. Just imagine that most of the citizens in Capernaum they gather at the front door waiting for a hit, waiting to be touched. But how many of you know that people that people love the cats? Their problem on you. We have family members. We have those in the church. We have those on the job that love to come to you for counseling sometimes because of your work, because they see you in the word of God so often. But I stop by to tell you that even though. Even though people carry their stuff to you, your assignment must be completed. So you must learn how to cast your care upon the Lord and let him sustain you. That's why Proverbs 12 and 25 Every now and then, uh, at the end of the day, uh, when you lay down. 
The answer seems so far away. We read those healing stories in Mark and other parts of the Bible. Then we wish that we had the access to the same healing and the same deliverance today. My brother and sister, I just stopped by to let you know that they're still healing in the church. They're still healing in your closet. They're still healing in your bedroom. They're still healing in your car. You just got to know how to assess the presence of God. My brothers and sisters, I may not know a whole lot about healing, but I do know that one thing is that when I call on him, he healed my body. He may not have come when I called him, but as I waited patiently for him to come, I had faith enough to believe that he would show up. That's one thing I know for sure is that he had to lift me emotionally, mentally, and physically when the devil and other people tried to take me out. But no matter how this man of things may have seen and no matter how many questions you may have. God is not far from you. And with God nearby, we don't have to be afraid. We all have busy lives. Things of the world that's designed to occupy our time. And because of our diversity and our approach to God, we cripple our resource. What some have allowed, they have allowed even this pandemic to go into that box of problems and worries and concerns. Not realizing that God, he has the answer. But it's up to everyone, every man, woman, to make a choice on who they would serve. This world are the things that pertain to hell. There's often a lot of demands on our time. And we know that there were also demands on Jesus, time as well as attention. But that evening, after the day before, healing Peter's mother in law, After delivering people from leprosy and all sorts of demonic strongholds and disease, Jesus went to bed and realizing that just a little talk with Jesus would make everything all right. So we got up early that morning. And stepped out of the house and he went to an isolated place. And no one know he knew he had left. Then they came looking for him. And he said, everyone is looking for you. 
he said, he got to move on and preach the next town also. My brothers and sisters, in this walk and in our ministry, some are just stuck in one time, one dimension, one place. When God is saying that you got to go to the next town because they got to hear the word too. And what I'm saying is that you can't be stuck in your home trying to save and deliver those in your home. Sometimes you have to go next door. And share the word. Because a prophet without honor in his own country and a lot of time in his own home, his own kids. So Jesus went out to pray because he needed to prepare himself for the next assignment. So this morning, I say to you, in my clothes, Jesus said that when you pray, go into your room, lock your door, and pray to your heavenly Father in secret. He who knows what in secret will listen to you. As God's children, we are in a unique and a very special situation. We have the privilege of knowing that God is ready to take care of us. He's there when we need help. He's there when we need comfort. He's there when we need strength. God is always there to help us through the troubles, our troubles of life. But you need to be constantly in prayer so that he will have something to work with. He doesn't respond just because you say all the right words and have the right kind of thoughts. He is the God of the Bible. The God of power and might. The God of love and compassion. He comes to us out of his love for us and nothing else. Our burdens can be very heavy, but the Lord has allowed us to load them on him if we only choose to do so. How do you share your burdens? I don't know who you are on this day, but know that we share our burdens through prayer. God spent quiet time with the Father to replenish and to prepare Himself, and you must do the same thing to bring His life back into order. Because when we bring that life back into order, we have positioned ourselves as well. So I don't know what may be troubling you today, but God will give you strength. He will give you power to overcome anything that's trying to stop you, block you, and destroy 
Anything that's trying to take your mind, your self-esteem, your self-confidence, and your ability to serve Him. All you have to do is talk to Him. My brothers and sisters, prepare yourself for your next assignment. Because you got more work to do. Don't let this pandemic stagnate you and keep you from continuing in God's word. God knows your heart and he knows whether or not you're real. God bless you. And may heaven continue smile on this time there be anyone that don't know Christ for the party of your sin. If you don't know him as your personal Savior, I want you to take this time right now to shut the world off. Shut those out that are around you. And say, Father, here I am. I'm yours. Speak to my heart and speak to my mind. Because now I am ready to surrender my all to you. I'm a sinner, Rachel Dunn. But I know, Father, that you are married to the back slide. Father, thank you for my praise. This is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you.